Okay, in this part, we're going to generate the fully structured grid for the simulation of flow around the building. So now we already generated the geometry, so we see the green tick. Now we're going to create the mesh. So we have to double click on the mesh to open the ANSYS meshing module. So I have already opened the ANSYS meshing module and we have the geometry inside. I select the mesh and now I'm going to select the edges surrounding the building in order to set the edge sizing. So I have to rotate the geometry a bit to look down. So now we have the edges surrounding the building and we're looking from the bottom. And now I have to select one, two, three, four edges here. One, two, three, and four edges here. So eight so far. And the, and the facing edges. So one here. So I rotate the domain a bit. So we want to select the edges on the bottom plane. So one here. one here and so there's also one here that we have to zoom a bit okay this one is also selected now we have one more here that we also need to zoom a bit okay so now I have four here four here eight and four others here so 12 in total so I right click on them on one of them and then click insert sizing okay so now I have 12 edges and now I'm going to uh, put uh, 14 elements on the building edges so I change the type of the sizing from element size to number of divisions and I put 14 and to make sure that I force the software to uh, put uh, 14 nodes on the edge of the building so I change the behavior to from soft to hard it means that the software has to follow this number so it has no flexibility and now we're going to have some refinement near the edges of the near the corners of the uh, building so I have to put some bias so I change the bias type to a behavior so that it has it is refined on the sides and coarsened on the middle so I put a transition ratio of 1.3 so now we see that the edges are refined near the corners and then coarsened in the middle so we see that we check that for all the edges so we see that the trend is correctly selected so this is correct and also here, here, and the last edge. So all of them are correctly set. Okay, so just two points here. So the transition ratio, the value which is set here, uh, is um, based on the value already determined for this grid to create a smooth Great. So for any, so this value is case dependent. So if you're going to create a new geometry with different dimensions, so this value could be different. So you have to start with a value, check the smoothness of the grid, and then uh, modify it until you have a smooth grid without any jump in the cell size. And the 14 cells along the building edge is the minimum number recommended in the literature okay so we have the uh, edges of the building already selected so it was uh, 12 edges now we're going to go to the edges upstream of the building so all the edges note that all the edges that we select are on the bottom plane uh, so we set the sizing on the bottom plane and then later we extrude it throughout the domain. So we always selecting the edges on the top and on, on the bottom plane. 
Okay, so now I go right to the mesh and then I select one, two, three, and four. So all on the bottom uh, plane and then the uh, upstream lines from the inlet towards the building. So and then I right click and then select insert sizing. And then here I use an element size of 1.7 meter. Uh, here we also need to put some bias so that the cells refine towards the building. So I change the bias tab from no bias to refinement in one direction. And then I put a smooth stream, uh, transition ratio of 1.1. Now we have to check if all the edges are correctly set. So we see this one is coarser here and finer near the building. Also this one, also this one, but this is reverse. So we have a reverse bias so that we can select some one or some of the edges to reverse the bias. So I select this one and then I select this edge and then I go apply. So this edge is also reversed. So now we have four edges with the uh, correct bias direction. So again, uh, I repeat the element size and the growth ratio for these edges and also all the other edges are based on the previous test to give a smooth grid for this geometry. For any other geometry, these values need to be determined based on... Uh, so a first uh, one value and then creating the grid, checking everywhere and then refining. So now we're going to go to the next step which is the edges downstream of the building towards the outlet of the domain. So there we also have four edges, one, two, three and four. And here we also right click, insert sizing. And then here for the element size, we use 2.3 meter. And then here we also need to refine towards the building. So we put a bias type. And then a smooth transition ratio of 1.05. 1, 1 now we also need to check all of them. See these three lines are refined near the building, towards the building, but this one is reverse. So the same way we select the reverse bias and we select this line, apply, so this line is now also corrected. Okay, so this was also about the downstream lines. So now we're going to select the lateral, uh, the lateral edges. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, eight. So eight edges, eight lateral edges in total. So we also right click here, insert sizing. And for these edges, we use an element size of 1.6 meter. Again, we need to refine towards the building. So we need to put a bias. So I set, I set the bias type. And then for the smooth transition ratio, we use a value of 1.1. So now these three edges are refined towards the building. This is correct. This, this two also refined towards the building, but this one is reversed. And then if you look also at the edges here, then you also see that this one is correct, but this one not. So we have to reverse the bias of two of the edges. So I select the reverse bias, I select this edge, and I select also this edge. And then I click apply, then we see that those two are also corrected. Okay, there were all the edges in the in the bottom plane. 
Now we also need to set the steps for the uh, edges in the normal plane so that we can use the extrusion of the mesh or what we call the sweep method. So now first we're going to select all the small edges from the bottom of the domain to the building top. Okay, so now let's check them. So, so here we have one, two, three, and four. 6, 7, oh, sometimes we need to zoom, 8, 9, 10, 11, so here, how many are still remaining, okay, we have to zoom a bit here, so 12, 13, 14, 15, okay, so one more, and okay, so we have four edges on the building, along the building height, four here, and the inlet, four the outlet of the domain and then okay so two on this side and two on this side okay so let's also set the sizing here so in total 16 edges <coughs> here we set the sizing also based on the number of divisions because this is also one of the edges of the building so again here we're going to set uh, 14 nodes along the building height again based on the minimum value recommended in the literature and then again we're going to have a bias uh, which refines the cell towards the corners of the building so I changed the, uh, the bias type and then I select a bias type which refines on the sides and then I put a refinement ratio, growth ratio of 1.3. Now we look closer. Okay, now it's correctly set. We see that we have refiner cells near the corners and coarser in the middle. So this is what we want. So this is also correctly set. Now we have to select the edges above the building to the top of the domain. So I go select on the mesh and then this one. You also go the same way. So the edges on the inlet plane and then the edges on the outlet plane. Two edges on this side, two edges on the other side and four edges right above the building okay now we also right click insert sizing so here also 16 edges in total and here we use a number of, also we use the number of divisions and we put 20 cells above the building height and here again we want to co uh, uh, refine the cells near the building side so I need to put a bias type and then for the bias type I put a growth ratio uh, smooth transition ratio of 1.2 which is the default value and we have to also check all the edges to see they are coarser on the top and finer on the bottom so these four are correct these four are also correct these two this four and this two okay all of the edges seem to be correct now we set all the sizing for all the edges now we have to see what else we want to do
okay uh, in order to create the structured grid so let's rotate to the top of to the bottom of the domain which is the source plane that we're going to set the sizing based on this one so we need to select the faces on the bottom first So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So these are the uh, edges on the bottom plane. And then we have one more, which is this one, the building height, the building top. And now we have all the edges on the bottom plane. Now we want to set the fully structured grid for the software. So we have to right click and then here we name it face meshing. So I select face meshing and then we have nine faces in total, three here, three here, and one, two, and one, the building top. So and then we have selected the face meshing. Okay. This is also correctly set. And now what is left is the last step, which is the extrusion of the mesh from the bottom plane to the top plane. So now we have to select the bodies in order to set the mesh method. So we have the first we first select the surrounding bodies of the building except the building except the volume on the top of the building and then we right click select method and then for the method we have a method which is called the sweep method So we select the sweep method and then for the sweep method we can select the source and target so that the software knows from where to start the uh, grid and where to end it. So uh, the default is automatic so we change it to manual source and target. So for the source we have to select the bottom plane, the faces on the bottom plane, so eight in total. So eight correctly selected. So let's check one more if they are correctly selected. Seem to be correctly selected. Okay, so we confirm and then we go to the target, which is the top. And then we select also the top eight faces. Okay, and then for the cell type, we change it to all quad. Because here we own only the quad cells. And then the rest we don't. Uh, touch it. Okay, so this was the sweep method for the volume surround the volume surrounding the building. Now we have one more volume, which is the volume in the middle on the top of the building. So we select this volume. And we saw we also select insert method, and then the same method insert and the sweep method. And then for the source and target, we select manual source and target. Now we're looking at the top. So I select the target, which is this face on the top of the domain. And now we want to select the source. I rotate the domain. And then I select the source, which is the, the top of the building. And then this is already set. 
and then I change the cell type to only all quad and then this is also done so I put the geometry in the middle and everything is set for the grid generation so we save the project okay just to check okay so it's already saved so now uh, okay now this is time to press generate mesh so you can also right click here and select generate mesh well, it might take some seconds before you have the grid okay now we have the grid ready now we can take a look to see if it looks as we planned it okay so I look normal to the XY plane everything look, looks good so we have coarser cells here refined towards the building also from the outlet we have coarser cells refined towards the building also from the side refined towards the building to so this is correct now we zoom a bit on the building itself on the top of the building so here we also see that this is the top of the domain and then we have refiner cells near the building at corners and then coarser here so this is exactly what we planned it uh, you know that the reason that we refine the cells towards the edges of the building is because we expect higher gradients there so we refine the cells there to have better accuracy on the regions where we have higher gradients okay now let's look at the other plane and the um, yz plane so here we also see that we have the same behavior and then so here from the bottom to the top of the domain and then here we also see that we have coarser cells in the mid height of the building but finer near the ground and also near the building height so this is also the way we wanted the grid and also the other plane also looks the same so now we have generated the a fully structured grid for the simulation of the flow around the building so this is the hollow region for the building so we're going to simulate the flow around this region so now let's also look at the statistics to see how many cells we have okay so we have almost 240,000 cells for this domain which is quite a large domain so with this number of cells still you can do the simulation using the ANSYS student license which is free and then the quality we can check for example the different metrics so here for example the aspect ratio we have the maximum aspect ratio of 30 okay and then because the cells are all quad so if you check the skewness it's zero okay so we also check the quality of the grid for example one thing else that we can do is making a cross section look in the middle of the grid or we can also change for example to to wireframe like this so that you can look through the grid if you like this is also possible and now I bring it back to the default just shade it so now let's let's 
okay and uh, so this uh, okay so now we also can make a section plane to look inside so select here and then I draw a line here and then we easily could create a section plane and then you can look through there uh, great so I just turn it off so that the domain goes back to the original form so I the grid is ready I close the meshing software and then sometimes we also need to do some update here Was taking some seconds and then as soon as we have the green tick here then the grid is ready to be transferred to the uh, simulation software which here is ANSYS Fluent. Okay so we have the green tick everything is ready to be transferred to the meshing to the simulation software. So I save the project and this is the end of this part of the tutorial.